pushing back Chrysler's bold decision to fight the feds and not recall millions of vehicles has the industry buzzing. That story's next. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the newscast. I'm Tom Morabeck. Coming up, we'll hear why denying the government's request to call back vehicles is so unusual. Plus, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is weighing in on Chrysler's stance. Automotive news readers have plenty of thoughts. We'll share them with you. And we'll discuss Chrysler's next steps. But first up, the nuts and bolts. On Tuesday, Chrysler said it will not honor a request from NHTSA to recall some 2.7 million Jeep Grand Cherokee and Liberty SUVs. NHTSA says a recall is needed to address safety problems with the vehicle's fuel systems. An agency investigation revealed numerous fire-related deaths and injuries. But the Pennistar says the vehicles are safe and that NHTSA's conclusions are based on an incomplete analysis of the underlying data. The automaker says it will continue to work with NHTSA to resolve the disagreement. Dennis Farag, president of Automotive Consulting Group, tells Bloomberg that a recall of 2.7 million vehicles would cost Chrysler at least $500 million. Clarence Ditlow, who heads the Center for Auto Safety, has been crusading for a recall of these vehicles for years now. On his website, he writes, the refusal to recall these rolling firebombs is an insult to its customers who ride at risk every day of being hit from behind and going up in flames, and to American taxpayers who bailed out Chrysler. Meantime, Alan Cam, a former senior enforcement attorney at NHTSA, says it is rare for an automaker to deny a request from the agency for a recall. The main reason is that NHTSA has the authority to order an automaker to recall its cars. Usually, if a car company initially refuses to recall its cars, the company will later settle with NHTSA to minimize costs and unfavorable publicity. Admins.com senior analyst Michelle Krebs telling Bloomberg the move is, quote, highly unusual, especially after Toyota underwent multiple investigations and hearings after resisting recalls over unintended acceleration. Reaction also coming in from NHTSA chief David Strickland. He said in a statement, NHTSA hopes that Chrysler will reconsider its position and take action to protect its customers and the driving public. This story also generating spirited debate on our website. Bronson writes, Chrysler must recall if there are clear evidences. Otherwise, is disrespect towards customers. This from John 5570. It will certainly cost Chrysler's image in the long term if public opinion decides that they are wrong even if they aren't. He adds, if the vehicles are unsafe and don't meet required standards, then I'm all for a recall. Leave the politics out of it. The water is muddy enough. Heap Big Engine says, I would think that any OEM takes potential fire hazards most seriously. Seems Chrysler feels the data is on their side and has chosen to say no. To that, I say bravo Chrysler. If the facts support your position, good for you. We all know what the all-knowing government folks and some of the media did to Toyota. Automotive supplier says NHTSA should help pay for any recall, writing, quote, why did the NHTSA allow any manufacturer to produce vehicles with this design and then demand a recall? They could have changed the standards in 1978. So what's next? Well, Chrysler has until June 18th to send NHTSA a response. If there is no recall, NHTSA could issue an initial decision that a safety defect exists and hold a public hearing. Next, it could issue a final decision and order a recall. Chrysler could challenge that in federal court, but NHTSA could also sue Chrysler to force compliance. 
Chrysler may be forced to write owners of the affected vehicles saying it is resisting NHTSA's recall order. You can check out autonews.com for the latest on this developing story. Certainly lots of news. Thanks so much for watching today and we will see you right back here tomorrow.